All right, let's take a look at loops and how loops are going to help you improve your coding and do some nice little tasks. Now, this is the first video on loops. So all we want to show you is really the basics, right? Introduce you to a couple different looping structures in GameMaker. So you'll see what I've done here is I have the room set up and I have an object called master and I'm just going to go into master and use a couple key press events to just do some loops. So let's do a key press letter A and I'll just code some stuff in here. Now there's a couple of different loops that you can use in uh, most programming languages. So I'm going to walk you through the ones that GameMaker has. First I'm going to show you the one that uh, we will never use although you can use it if you want and it's the repeat command and I'll just do this repeat three show message hi so basically what this is saying is the repeat is a special statement that says repeat you tell it how many times whatever code you put between the curly braces that block of code gets repeated so when I actually give this a go you'll see that it works as you'd probably expect it to work and I hit the A key, and it says hi, 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 and that's it, three times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same task, but I'm going to do it with a few different kind of loop structures, and I actually prefer these other loop structures because these other loop structures are ones that you'll find in other programming languages. So I'm going to take that repeat one out, and the first loop structure I'm going to show you is the do loop. Now here's how the do loop works in GameMaker. Basically I'm going to set this up, I'm going to have a little counter, I'm going to say counter starts at 1, and I should actually make this a local variable there. Okay, you don't have to, but you know, we don't need this variable to stick around after, so we'll make it local. And here's my do loop, I'm going to say do, show message hi, and I'm going to make then the counter go up by 1. Okay, so let's remember that's my shorthand, right? For counter equals counter plus one. I end that block of code, and I'm going to say keep repeating until counter is greater or equal to four. So if you think about this, what this should do, it starts at one, it will show the message high. The counter goes up, now it's two. You have to keep repeating until the counter is greater or equal to 4. Now it's only 2, so it's going to go back again. It's going to show high again, and that's the loop part. It goes back up. It shows high again. The counter goes up by 1 to 3. Well, we're not 4 yet, so keep going. Print high. It goes up to 4, and now until the counter is greater or equal to 4, it is, that's when you get to stop repeating. So this basically reads, this basically reads, keep repeating until counter equals four. But of course you don't write all that in there. So when we give this one a run, we should see the same effect as our repeat statement before, but this time you're actually using a loop that you'll find in some other languages. So I hit A, there's one, two, three. The counter is now four, and so it doesn't repeat. So that's pretty good. That's the do until loop. Now, are there other ways to do this? Sure. Let's do this. I'm just going to comment that one out. The next loop I'm going to show you is the while loop. And I'm going to do something very similar here. I'm still going to keep this counter at 1. And this time, the statement starts with while. And I'm going to say while the counter is less then are equal to 3. Show message hi. Counter plus equals 1. So similar in that you still have a condition, but what's different about this one is this one says while the counter is less than or equal to 3, repeat whatever code you put in here. So when this starts out, counter is 1, while the counter is less than or equal to 3, yes. It shows the message, and then it adds 1. So now the counter is 2. It comes back up, while the counter is less than or equal to 3, it's true. It prints it again, it ups the counter, the counter is 3, 
while counter is less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. It shows the message. The counter goes up to 4. It comes back up, and that's now false. It's false. It doesn't do anything. It jumps back down here and continues on to run whatever code is after the while loop. So you'll see here with the do loop and the while loop, they're similar in a lot of ways, but one big difference is this. If I put that to 10, while the counter is less than or equal to 3, that's not true. It won't even do this block of code once. So maybe it never happens. Whereas the do loop always does it at least once, then it repeats when the condition evaluates. And so that's one big difference between do until and the while loop. Okay, I technically prefer the while loop, and I think you'll use the while loop a bit more often, but you never know, right, what your situation is. Let's put that back there. So anyways, that's the while loop, just to prove it works. Give it a quick run. Hit the A key. One, two, three, and it's done. All right, so still three times. Now, before I show you the last type of loop, just want to point something out here. I could have also done this. I could have said start at zero and keep going while you're less than three. This is still going to execute the same number of times. A common uh, mistake or trouble beginners have is that you got to be really careful when looking at how these loops are done here, what you start at, and the exact condition that ends the loop. It's easy to be thrown off by one in either direction, right? One too many, one too few. So, you know, just go slowly, and as you do a couple of these, you'll get used to it. Now, the last type of loop, so let's just comment this one out. The last type of loop is one that I find uh, game programmers use a lot, is the for loop. Now the for loop is going to look a little tricky, but I want you to remember this loop, the while loop when we do this, because it really is, it's almost the same, it just looks different. So here we go. I want to print out high three times. Four. I'm going to start a counter uh, for no reason, I'll just call this one k this time. Ah, let's make it counter again. Counter equals 1, semicolon. While counter is less than or equal to 3, this loop should continue, semicolon. And counter plus equals counter plus 1. Show message high. And that's it. So in some ways, it's short. It's only the two lines, really, right? Here's how this one works. This one basically incorporates the starting value of your counter, which is right there, right inside the command here. The condition that it runs is right there, and this condition is done before running the code, which means the for loop, if I did this, Counter is 10. Hey, run this code as long as counter is less than or equal to 3. This would not run the code even once. Okay, so it checks before it runs the code. So it's a lot like the while loop in that sense. And then this part here, the third part after the semicolon here, this is the increment. Now, not all for loops have increments, but the beginner ones will stick with this. This just tells you what to do with the counter after this code is run. So this line right here, you can imagine that it's really right here. Okay, so that's its placement. It doesn't add one to the counter before running the code. It runs one to the counter after running your code. So when this starts, counter will be one. It checks. Yes, it's, that's good. It prints high. Then it runs this line and adds 1. It checks. It's still good. Shows the message. Then it adds 1 to the counter. It checks. We're still good. It prints high. 
adds one. It goes back up. And then I may have missed the show message there. But you get the idea. And then we break it. We're at four. It leaves the loop. And then it continues on its way. Okay, so that's the for loop. Okay, just to show it's working, you'll see we should get the three highs again. And those are your basic one, two, three, and it's done. Now, that's a very basic intro to the three types of loops that you can do. So, basically what you have here is you have your repeat command, you know, like repeat five. You've got your do until loop. You've got your while loop, and we've shown you the for loop. Now, as you code with these, what you're going to realize is that sometimes the for loop is sort of better or looks better. Uh, you can see here, for 1, to 30 times, do this. So you know that's going to be 30 times, easy to read, 1 to 30. Every coder looks at that that knows these loops, and they know exactly what that's going to do. It's sort of short and sweet. Where sometimes you don't know how long you're going to do something. For instance, you might do something like this. While player life is bigger than zero, do the following code. And you have some code in there. You don't know how many times this could run, right? Because the player life at any point in this loop may change. So, you know, there's times for the while loop. There's times for the for loop. There's times for the do until loop. And you know what? When you just want a simple repeating, I guess you could use the repeat command. But this is uh, pretty exclusive to Game Maker. You won't see this one in other languages. So I don't really uh, like to spend too much time with it. Anyways, that's your loop stuff. Uh, we have a worksheet for you to do now. You can practice some reading loops and writing some loops just to make sure you've got the uh, foundation for loops. Good, because we're going to build on this in the next lesson. And then in the next lesson, we're going to make these things awesome. Okay, so good luck with the worksheet. See you in the next video.